Uh, Lamar stated his views on police brutality with that line in the song, quote, and we hate the popo, want to kill us in the street, fo show. And we hate popo, want to kill us dead in the street, for sure. Nigga, I met the preacher's door. That's why I say that hip hop has done more damage to young African Americans than racism in recent years. Uh, this is exactly the wrong message. Regarded as one of the most influential and most talented rappers, Kendrick Lamar has made a name for himself in the rap industry, winning 13 Grammy Awards, six Billboard Music Awards, and many more. He remains the only hip-hop artist to win the award. He is a cousin to NBA player Nick Young and rapper Baby Keem. New Kung Fu Kenny. Kendrick Lamar Duckworth was born on the 17th of June, 1987, in Compton, California. Although he grew up in the midst of gang members and violent acts, Kendrick never let himself be carried away by the gangster lifestyle. In 1984, a few years before Kendrick was born, his parents, Kenny Duckworth and Paula Duckworth, had moved from Chicago to Compton to escape the Southside gang culture. Kenny was reportedly involved with a Southside street gang called the Gangster Disciples, so his wife, Paula Oliver, issued an ultimatum. They packed their clothes into two garbage bags and boarded a train to California with only $500. They were heading to San Bernardino, but one of their relatives was in Compton. She got them a hotel to stay at until they got on their feet. Paula got a job at McDonald's where she earned little money. The couple slept in their car or motels or in the park for some time until they were able to gather enough money to get their first apartment where they had Kendrick. The Duckworths survived on welfare and food stamps and Paula did hair for $20 while Kenny had a job at KFC. But at a certain point, Kendrick suspected that his dad was probably making money off the streets. In his interview, he had mentioned one incident that happened on April 29, 1992, which was the first day of the South Central riots. Kendrick matured at a very early age. He had two little brothers and one younger sister, but until he was seven, he was the only child. He was so precocious, his parents nicknamed him Man Man. His mother described him as a loner. He was always watching from the corners of his room. Although his family was affected by the violence of the street, Kendrick had a lot of good memories of Compton as a kid. Riding his bike, doing backflips off his friend's roofs, sneaking into the living room during his parents' house parties. Like the Tom Petty's childhood story, Kendrick had a similar story, just that his was sitting on his dad's shoulders outside the Compton swap meet age eight, watching Dr. Dre and Tupac shoot a music video for the song California Love. As a child, Kendrick attended McNair Elementary and Vanguard Learning Center in the Compton Unified School District. Growing up, he loved basketball. He was short but quick. He always dreamed of making it to the NBA. As late as middle school, he had a noticeable stutter. But in seventh grade, an English teacher named Mr. Inga turned him on to poetry, rhymes, metaphors, double entendres, and Kendrick fell in love with poetry. He said, at home, Kendrick started writing nonstop. As a teenager, he graduated from Centennial High School in Compton, where he was a straight-A student. Being a straight-A student, he had hopes of going to college. But by the time he was in high school, he was hanging with a bad crew. He had several run-ins with the police, and they pulled guns on him on two separate occasions. Before Kendrick became one of the biggest rappers in the rap industry, he was simply known as K-Dot. In 2003, he released his first mixtape. He was only 16 years old at the time, and he had recorded the songs at Concrete Jungle Music Studio. One of the tracks on the mixtape was a freestyle over Jay-Z's Hava song from Volume 3, The Life and Times of S. Carter. The mixtape drew a lot of interest in his native Southern California and beyond. The mixtape was so good that young Kendrick started to get some local recognition, according to D. Omen. It was the mixtape that was passed over to Top Dog Entertainment and made them want to sign young Kendrick. Top Dog Entertainment was then a newly founded indie record label that was based in Carson, California. Kendrick was able to secure a recording contract with the TDE. He began recording material with the label and subsequently released a 26-track mixtape titled Training Day in 2005. When he was interviewed by Hip Hop DX, he had some things to say about his first mixtape. I think that everybody has, everybody has their mission to, 
set out what they want to do or what they're supposed to do in life. I think God made me to spread my voice to the world, straight up. Through 2006 and 2007, Kendrick would appear alongside other up-and-coming West Coast rappers such as J-Rock and Ya Boy as opening acts for veteran West Coast rapper The Game. Under the moniker K-Dot, Kendrick also featured on the game's songs like The Cypha. In 2008, Kendrick was prominently featured throughout the music video for J-Rock's commercial debut single, All My Life in the Ghetto, which featured American hip-hop superstar Lil Wayne and was backed by Warner Brothers Records. Kendrick gained more recognition after a video of a live performance of a Charles Hamilton show surfaced in which Hamilton battled fellow rappers who were in the audience. Lamar began rapping a verse over the instrumental to Milkbone's Keep It Real, which would later appear on a track titled West Coast Wu-Tang. Kendrick released his third mixtape in 2009, right after he received a co-sign from Lil Wayne. He had gotten co-signs from some of hip-hop's top veterans, most recently getting a hat tip from Lil Wayne, who joined Kendrick, K-Dot, on stage at Power 106's Cali Christmas Live. In an interview with Civil TV, Kendrick talked about how Lil Wayne had influenced his style and what it meant to be recognized by the YMCMB chief. The mixtape was titled C4, which was heavily themed around Wayne's album, The Carter Three. In late 2009, Kendrick released a self-titled extended play, EP, where he reintroduced himself in the form of his self-titled EP. This is the Kendrick Lamar experience, the beginning of the story of the good kid that just wants to rap. That same year, Kendrick, together with some of TDE label mates like J-Rock, Ab Soul, and Schoolboy Q, formed Black Hippie, which was a hip-hop supergroup. The group represented a consolidation of the members of the TDE crew, and it was a clever decision that was made. Unlike many hastily formed groups, the members boast the sort of hard-earned chemistry that comes from having rapped together for a very long time. Without too much effort, these rappers were able to make mad hits. In a video, Zip That, Chop That, the rappers were able to show their different vocal tones and styles which made them unique and lively. Former G-Unit in-house producer The Business always made sure to give them the best and understated beat that complemented the group well. Though it remains unclear exactly what is hippie-like about smoking blunts and listening to Biggie adjacent to the LA theater, Zip That, Chop That is one of the most effective advertisements for the power of the hip-hop group. It captured four talented rappers who occasionally float rudderless, solo, and harness them into something focused and worthy of the rewind button or a half a dozen YouTube replays. That downloaded it, man. Really appreciate it. It's only been out three hours, and the feedback I'm getting on it is tremendous, man. I just want to say I appreciate y'all, man, for even just taking the time out to go to your computers and, and support good music, man. You know what I mean? I want to let y'all know that I also put in a 100% effort to make this the best project possible, you know what I mean? I was going to make it just a six-song EP, but I felt like y'all needed more of me, you know what I mean? On the 14th of September, 2010, Kendrick released the visuals for PNP 1.5, which was a song taken from his mixtape, Overly Dedicated, which featured Ab Soul, one of the black hippie rappers. On the same date, he released Overly Dedicated to digital retailers under TDE, and later, on September 23rd, he released it online for free. The project peaked at number 72 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. The mixtape included a song titled Ignorance is Bliss, where he rapped about the gang lifestyle and street crime. He ended each verse with Ignorance is Bliss, giving the message, we know not what we do. The song was doing so well that it made hip hop producer Dr. Dre want to work with him after watching the music video on YouTube. This and a conversation with Dre and J. Cole, J. Cole helped introduce Kendrick to Dre, which led to Kendrick working with Dr. Dre. The producer was briefly interviewed by Hollywood TV, where he made it known that he wanted to work with a Compton, California hip-hop icon in the new year. Kendrick worked with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg on Dre's often-delayed Detox album, as well as speculations of Kendrick signing to Dr. Dre's label, Aftermath Entertainment. It was a fucking honor, said Kendrick, when he learned Dre was aware of him. They were in the studio together recording. It was a memorable moment. In December 2010, Complex Magazine spotlighted Kendrick in an edition of their Indie Intro series. In early 2011, Kendrick was included on XXL's annual Top 10 Freshman Class, 
He was also featured on the cover alongside fast rising rappers Cy High to Prince, Meek Hill, Fred the Godson, Mac Miller, Yellow Wolf, and Big Crit, and Diddy Simons. On the 11th of April 2011, Kendrick announced the title of his next full length project to be Section 80. And the next day, the first single, High Power, was released, the concept of which was to further explain the high power movement. The song was produced by rapper J. Cole, marking their first of several collaborations. In an interview with Soul Culture TV, Kendrick was asked whether his next project would be an album or a mixtape. In June 2011, he released Ronald Reagan era His Evil, a cut from Section 80, featuring Wu-Tang Clan leader RZA. On the 2nd of July 2011, he released Section 80, which was his first independent album. The album features guest appearances from GLC, Colin Monroe, Schoolboy Q, and Ab Soul, while the production was handled by Top Dog in-house production team Digiphonics, as well as Wildfire, Terrence Martin, and J. Cole. The album went on to sell 5,300 digital copies in its first week without any television or radio coverage and received mostly positive reviews. In August 2011, while he was performing at a West Coast Los Angeles concert, Kendrick was dubbed the new king of the West Coast by Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Game. They each emerged with a surprise performance and then told Kendrick that he was carrying the torch for the West Coast hip hop now. Kendrick choked up and was engulfed in a group hug by Snoop, Game, Warren G, and Karat while the crowd erupted. On August 24th, 2011, Kendrick released the music video for the Section 80 track ADHD. The video was directed by Vashti Kola. In October 2011, Kendrick appeared alongside fellow American rappers B.O.B., Tech 9 MGK, and Big Crit in a cipher at the BET Hip Hop Awards. Also in October, Kendrick partnered with Windows Phone and crafted an original song with producer No Saj Thing entitled Cloud 10 to promote Microsoft's new product. Throughout the year, Kendrick appeared on several high-profile albums, which include Game's The Red Album, Tech 9s All Sixes and Sevens, Ninth Wonder's The Wonder Years, and Drake's Grammy Award-winning Take Care, which featured Kendrick on a solo track. As years passed, Kendrick continued to drop hit songs and albums. On February 15, 2012, a song by Kendrick titled Cartoon and Serial, which featured gunplay, was leaked online. Although the song ranked number two in Complex's Best 50 Songs of 2012, it would ultimately fail to appear on Kendrick's debut. He would continue to appear in different magazines. In February, he also embarked on Drake's Club Paradise tour, opening along with ASAP Rocky and 2 Chains. In March, MTV announced that Kendrick had signed a deal with Interscope Records and Aftermath Entertainment, marking the end of his career as an independent artist. Under the new deal, Kendrick's projects, including his album Good Kids, Mad City, would be released. He also appeared on The Last Call with Carson Daly, where he spoke on Dr. Dre in his hometown of Compton, California. On October 22, 2012, Kendrick released his second studio album titled Good Kid, Mad City, a modern hip-hop classic that many still considered his biggest hit and the turning point for the Compton rapper. With this album, he was able to gain real commercial success without compromising on his vision or art. He had radio singles for Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, The Recipe, Swimming Pool, and Poetic Justice. In an interview, he mentioned that he wanted to produce some commercial hits with the album. The album debuted number two on the US Billboard 200, selling over 200,000 copies in its first week and received great reviews. The album earned four Grammy nominations, which included Album of the Year. Later that year, Fuse TV listed Kendrick's single Backseat Freestyle among the top 40 songs of 2012. In a few months' time, the album was certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA. Hip Hop DX named Kendrick MC of the Year for their 2012 year-end honors. In August 2013, Kendrick's verse on the Big Sean track, Control, made waves across the hip-hop industry. In the verse, Kendrick vows to lyrically murder every other up-and-coming rapper like J. Cole, Big Crit, Whale, Pusha T, Meek Mill, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, and others. During the song, he also called himself the King of New York, which caused controversy among several New York-based rappers. 
On October 15th, 2013, Kendrick won five awards at the BET Hip Hop Awards, including Album of the Year and Lyricist of the Year, the latter of which he had also won the year before. In November 2013, he was named GQ's Rapper of the Year and was featured on the cover of the magazine's Men of the Year issue. Kendrick received a total of seven Grammy nominations at the 56th Annual Grammy Awards 2014, including Best New Artist, Album of the Year, and Best Rap Song, but did not win in any category. At the event, he performed Mad City and a remix of Radioactive. The remix was again performed by Kendrick and the band on February 1st, 2014, during the airing of Saturday Night Live, marking his second appearance on the show. On September 23rd, 2014, he released I as the first single from his third album. On November 15th, 2014, he once again appeared on Saturday Night Live as the musical guest where he performed I and Pay For It, appearing alongside J-Rock. On December 17th, 2014, he debuted a new untitled song on one of the final episodes of The Colbert Report. In early 2015, he won Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song for his song I at the 57th Annual Grammy Awards. On February 9th, 2015, he released his third album's second single, titled The Black of the Berry. On March 16th, 2015, he released his new album, To Pimp a Butterfly. The album went to the U.S. Billboard 200 chart, selling 324,000 copies in its first week and established Spotify's global first-day streaming record, 9.6 million. In April 2015, he became engaged to his high school girlfriend, Whitney Alford. His song, The Black of the Berry, gathered controversy. Some fans perceived the lines to be Kendrick judging the black community. There were reports that Kendrick had some complicated feud with Drake, and his verse from the song Control, where he called out lots of rappers, got some diss tracks in return. Kendrick has won 13 Grammy Awards, received two honors in his hometown. He also appeared for the first time on the Times 100 list of most influential people in 2016. His major album, Good Kid, Mad City, was named one of the 100 best debut albums of all time by Rolling Stone. To Pimp a Butterfly was ranked by many publications as one of the best albums of the 2010s. He has also won six Billboard Music Awards, seven BET Awards, and 19 BET Hip Hop Awards. He announced to the audience during Kanye West's Yeezus tour that he had been baptized in 2013. He is a devoted Christian and his lyrics and music have been proofs of his faith in God. His music has made a lot of impact in the world. In 2016, his music was used during protests against the US presidential election. Multiple artists have cited his work as an inspiration, including Khalid, Roddy Rich, Christine and the Queens, Janae Aiko, Corday, and others. It is safe to say that Kendrick Lamar is a living legend and the real goat in the hip hop industry. He never stopped releasing new albums and singles through the years and still to date. In 2022, he performed at the Super Bowl 55 halftime show alongside Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, 50 Cent, and Mary J. Blige. In recent news, Top Dog Entertainment, TDE, opens up about Kendrick's impending departure from the label. The artist made it known that his new album will be his last under TDE. In a new interview with Mike, TDE president Terrence Lewis Henderson Jr., popularly known as Punch, he opened up on the situation, which he briefly touched on via social media immediately following the announcing. He also talked about the black hippie group that included Kendrick, Absol, Schoolboy Q, and some other rappers. Fans are looking forward to seeing more of Kendrick Lamar. <laughs>